is underway with new hopes, new rivalries, new riders, and once again, some incredible competition. Will the newcomers topple the giants, or will tried and true champions dominate? The best male and female freestyle kiteboarders in the world will be out to get their new seasons off to a flying start and take that first step toward the WKL World Cup title for 2017. Can the Brazilians dominate once again, or will their rivals find a way to snatch the title from their grasp? The 2017 World Kiteboarding League kicks off with a bang as Le Cat France hosts the first round of the 2017 Freestyle Elite League Tour, where the world's best freestylers bring their magic to the shores of the French Mediterranean as tens of thousands flock to take in the spectacle. It's the 21st Mondial du Vent that Le Cat hosts, and it's considered one of the world's largest and most renowned kiteboarding events. The scenic corner of France's Occitanie region is particularly famous among kiteboarding circles for its distinctive northwesterly wind, the Tramontana. The conditions here are among the most challenging in the world, while the side offshore wind conditions are ideal for spectators, allowing them front row seats as the action unfolds. Yeah, the conditions in the cut are always very challenging. Uh, super strong winds, very gusty. Uh, some days very light as well, which makes it extra challenging. And of course, yeah, the top guys are here. Um, Bebe from Brazil, Alex Pasto from Spain, Liam from Spain as well. And of course, maybe some young new talents that, that can surprise us. But um, hopefully my training was enough and uh, I can get the top spot. In Le Cade, I mean, I've been coming here for so many years since I was like 14, one of my first competitions and almost been every year since, so I know the place really well. It always throws up some crazy conditions, tough challenging conditions. It really separates the level of the riders, so for me, I'm confident I can do okay here. 69 of the world's top freestyle riders from 20 nationalities were there to get the season off on a high note, including champions past and present. In the men, 2016 WKL champion Carlos Mario of Brazil leads the field. He had an exceptional season last year and he'll be looking to continue his winning streak. But he has to contend with very strong rivals who'll be pushing for the top spot, including former champions Yuri Zun and Alex Pastor, the young but highly experienced Liam Whaley, as well as Spanish sensation David Tony Juan, Austrian Stefan Spiesberger and another Brazilian set to Hera, who'll be out to continue his fine form from the last event in 2016. Five-time champion Aaron Hadlow is also back, but he has to go through the qualifying lead to get to the Elite League, as do South African Oswald Smith and the Dominican Riders, who proved they have the talent to be among the best last season. All eyes would be on the French riders, led by Antoine Fermont and the talented Garat brothers, Valentin and Sebastian, along with some fresh new talent that may cause some surprises and upset. In the women's, reigning WKL champion Bruna Kajia would once again have her work cut out for her as WKL runner-up Hannah Whiteley and Dutch riders Annabelle Van Westerop and Anna Luce Lammerts follow hot on her heels. Yeah, we are back for the 2017 season and I am, as always, super excited to be back. I'm feeling great, uh, my training has been on top of it and especially after an amazing finish last year, I'm definitely ready to go again. We have a brand new uh, look for the WKL2. We have the containers, the branding, it looks amazing. And I'm really excited about this. I work very hard and I want to do my best today. Last year's informed Czech rider Paula Novotna, Spaniard Rita Arnaus, and 2016's top new talent Pauline Valesa would all be there to get their 2017 campaigns off to a winning start. In the women's draw, the winners of the first four heats in round one make it directly into the round three semifinals, while the second and third placed riders proceed to round two for another shot at the semis in heats five and six, where the top two in each heat advance to the semis. The first and second place riders in the two semifinal heats will compete in the women's final. 
There were surprises right from the start as newcomer Maureen Castell of New Caledonia won the first women's heat of the day, beating two accomplished riders, Annabelle Van Westerup and Rita Arnaus. In heat two, there was another surprise as Francesca Bagnoli of Italy won a hard fought heat ahead of Hannah Whiteley and Teresa Tabo. In Heat 3, Paula Novotna dominated proceedings to clinch the Heat win, while in Heat 4 there was another big surprise as Dutch sensation Anneloos Lammerts produced an impressive comeback to beat the defending WKL champion Bruna Kajia. The second and third place ladies from Round 1 competed in Round 2 for another shot at the semis in Heats 5 and 6. In Heat 5, it was an intense showdown between the second and third ranked riders on the WKL Tour, Hannah Whiteley and Annabelle Van Westerup, both of whom advanced to the semis, joined by Heat 6 winner Bruna Cogia and Rita Arnaus of Spain. I think I made it particularly hard for myself, <laughs> crashing my two tricks. In the end, I turned it around and started landing everything, and then, uh, yeah. I'm stoked to make it. <laughs> yeah, I rode really well compared to my first heat today and I really feel like I'm getting that, you know, my mojo back. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just hope to keep riding like this, that'd be great. The women's round three semi-final lineup was decided in round two and now it was time to compete for a place in the final. Nothing but trouble. In the men's draw, there are four heats in round one. The first and second place riders in each of those four heats advance directly to round three. The rest go to round two for another shot as the top two riders from heats five to eight complete the round three lineup. In round three, the top two riders from each heat will advance to the semis where heats 13 and 14 will determine the four riders who will compete in the final. In the first men's heat of the Elite League, Set Tejera recovered from a poor start to make it into round three alongside Alex Pastor, while 2016 Rookie of the Year Aduri Corniel and Alex Neto of Brazil caused a major upset to take the round three slots in heat two at the expense of world number two Yuri Zun. In the third heat, the wind drop didn't affect Stefan Spiesberger, who proceeded to round three along with David Tony Juan, while defending WKL champion Carlos Mario picked up where he left off, landing one incredible trick after another to seal the win in heat four alongside a fired up Liam Whaley, who landed some brilliant back mobs and a big 3-1-7. The third and fourth place riders from each heat in round one went to round two for another shot at a round three slot. In Heat 5, former world champion Aaron Hadlow of the UK was outstanding, sealing the Heat win with an intimidating slim seven. He made it through along with South African Oswald Smith, while in Heat 6, another former world champion Yuri Zun advanced after an early scare alongside a surprise name, Nicola Delma. The man to watch in Heat 7 was Belgian Jerome Cleetons, who scored a memorable win, overcoming recent injury and lack of practice, while Posito Martinez held on for the second spot. Heat 8 was all about Dominican sensation Robinson Hilario, who stole the show with tricks of incredible height and amplitude, while Austrian Michael Schitzhofer's experience proved crucial in claiming the last third round spot. With the end of round two, the round three lineup was completed for the men, where the 16 remaining riders would compete for a spot in the semis. A former French national champion, Seb is one of the most experienced riders in the field and a big support to his younger brother, Val, who followed in his brother's footsteps in becoming French champion himself in 2016. The two travel, train and compete together. Let's take a look at their journey to the top of the world freestyle kiteboarding stage. I used to do a lot of windsurf when I was young with my parents and uh, my father came up first with kitesurfing, he tried. At the beginning, I didn't want to do it. I, I was still on uh, full windsurf, wanted to become world champion in windsurf. And uh, one day, uh, I said, okay, I have to try. And then I, from the first day I tried, I went back up wind first, and uh, I was full into it. And then uh, I sold all my windsurf gear, and, uh, and I went full on kitesurfing. 
and at the beginning it was hard to, to practice uh, as much as my brother because like I was really young and the, the gear was not as good as it is now so I just could practice in the summer and then slowly um, I was seeing my, my bro, I was a big fan of him and uh, I was dreaming about competing as well and um, when he was coming back from competition or trips I just wanted to go kite with him to show him my tricks and uh, my new tricks you know and he was like never saying he was so good you know but so I just tried to improve improve and like one day he said oh this one was good like and the first time he told me that I was like pretty happy you know but I didn't show, show him a lot so then I was like trying to, to do better and do better and to, to, to be as good as him and now uh, yeah, he's saying me some tricks are good so <laughs> I'm pretty happy. <laughs> I didn't have the chance to, uh, to have someone to teach me, to coach me and to give me uh, everything I, I could have need you know when I started. I really want to focus 100% on uh, coaching the French guys and uh, of course my brother. My main motivation is to bring him to the best level and, uh, and uh, support him like 100%. I'm just passionate about sport and I'm passionate about kite surfing so I just want to stay into this uh, into this and uh, I really don't know what what the future is going to bring me I just want to see and I just want to want to live life now and uh, I just feel as my dream you know, to to be able to travel and to to compete around the world living with kite surfing sharing that with my brother and uh, all my friends my family so yeah, it's pretty amazing and uh, for now I just want to think about that and not about the future <laughs>
Kajia threw down a 7.2 S Penta blind on her second trick. Anna Luce Lammerts did the same trick, scoring 6.9. Novotna started pushing the top two as she also went for an S Penta blind, nabbing eight points, beating both Kajia and Lammerts on the same trick. Rita Arnaus was having a shocker, and despite a solid final trick, it wasn't enough to put her in contention. Anna Luce Lammerts wasn't producing the big points in these conditions, but she was still landing solid tricks, including a 7.17 scoring back mobe that gave her the edge over Paula Novotna. When Kajia crashed two tricks in a row, Anna Luce Lammerts led the heat going into the final tricks. Could she beat Kajia again? But the defending WKL champion, Bruna Kajia, dug deep to produce an impressive 8.4 slim chance that nabbed the heat win for the world number one, with Lammerts making it into the final in second place. Yes, that was really crazy. I was super powered on my 5.5 chaos. And then in the end, I managed to do my tricks and I made it to the final. Round four, the semi-finals, and it was down to the last eight men. In heat 13, it was Set Tejera going up against Spaniard Liam Whaley and Dominicans Posito Martinez and Robinson Hilario. Tejera continued his exceptional form as he stormed through his opening tricks to take the early lead. But Liam Whaley was right up there with him until trick number four made the difference. Tejera read the wind well and picked the right kite, which paid off big time as he produced a huge 8.3 slim seven. The pressure was on Liam Whaley, who went all out looking to grab top spot from the Brazilian, but he crashed out as Tejera breathed a sigh of relief in first place. But a clean front blind mob and back mob five was enough to give Whaley a comfortable cushion in the heat behind Tejera. Meanwhile, Dominicans Posito Martinez and Robinson Hilario were having trouble with the Tramontana, suffering eight crashes between them. And despite getting the highest score in the heat with an 8.6317, Martinez would have to settle for third, with Hilario also struggling to put points on the board in fourth. So Tejera and Whaley proceeded comfortably into the finals. The second semi-final, Heat 14, saw Carlos Mario take on Spaniard Alex Pastor, Aaron Hadlow of the UK, and Stefan Spiesberger of Austria, and it proved to be an absolute nail-biter. My heat is pretty stacked. Uh, in the semi-final, there is, there is no easy heat. You have to go all in. I guess the conditions are still pretty similar. It's strong, then it's light again, so you need to be uh, quick with uh, kite changing sometimes and gonna have to pull out some, some good tricks to, to advance to the final. Defending WKL champion Carlos Mario dominated the heat early on with a brilliant sequence of doubles, including a backside 315, a 319, and a slim seven, getting above or near eight points on all four scoring tricks, which gave him a comfortable lead throughout the heat. But the real drama was the three way battle for a final spot between Aaron Hadlow, Stefan Spiesberger, and Alex Pastor. All three laid down solid tricks in their first attempts. Aaron Hadlow took control early on with a front blind mobe and back mobe five. It was a slower start from Pastor and Spiesberger, but Spiesberger improved with each trick, scoring a 7.17 back mobe five. Back to back crashes from Hadlow and Pastor gave Spiesberger the lead in this three way battle. Then Hadlow went out for his fourth trick and scored a 7.03 backside 315 to place himself in second place behind Carlos Mario. But Spiesberger struck back with a chrome 05 for 7.07 .07 points, putting the Austrian into second spot by only 0.01, while Aaron Hadlow went and scored a 6.27 slim five. Alex Pastor knew he needed to do something special if he wanted to stay in the running. He laid a 7.4 back mode five, but it wasn't enough to beat Hadlow. Spiesberger needed a seven pointer if he was to make it through to the final. It was make or break for the Austrian. A slim five and 
7.13, Stefan Spiesberger is in the finals with his very last trick. He joins Heat winner Carlos Mario. The ladies' final was an outstanding display from the very start, as all four riders showed how far the bar has been raised in female freestyle kiteboarding. Two of the riders, Francesca Bagnoli and Anna Luce Lammertz, got there all the way from the qualifier event. What an achievement. It was now all down to these four riders, with some big names out at the expense of some great new talent. Francesca Bagnoli produced three seven-pointers, as did Annabelle Van Westerop, who also scored an 8.4 slim on her fourth attempt. It was a tough battle right until the last trick. Bruna Cogia was in fine form, dominating with a nine-point slim in a four-way battle that was down to the final two tricks. Lammertz didn't get what she wanted, failing to get decent points to challenge Van Westerop and Kajia. Van Westerop needed eight points to topple Kajia. She scored an impressive 7.47 on her second last trick, hot on the heels of Kajia, but not enough for the lead. For her last attempt, Francesca Bagnoli needed an 8.91 score to clinch the title, but she failed to get a trick in. Then Van Westerop went out for her final attempt. Could she do it? She needed a big one. It was a brave shot, but she crashed out, and that gave a slim win to WKL number one, Bruna Kajia, by just 0.53. Bruna Kajia starts the 2017 WKL World Cup off with a win as she continues to dominate. Yes, I mean, it couldn't be better. I couldn't have wished for more. I trained really hard for it. I put my heart and soul into it. And out there in the water, I, I was so focused. I wanted this so bad and it paid off. So I'm on top of the world. I feel amazing. It was time for the men's final. The last four men in the Mondial du Vent, four of the most talented freestylers in the world. Liam Whaley, Carlos Mario, Set Tejera, and Stefan Spiesberger. Could Carlos Mario start his 2017 campaign with a win? Or would Spiesberger's consistency, Whaley's brilliance, or Tejera's tenacity cause an upset and win the day? Set Tejera took the early lead with an opening backside 317. Liam Whaley also had a consistent start with an S bent to blind, putting him just behind Tejera on the scoreboard. Then there were two uncharacteristic crashes from Carlos Mario that suddenly threw the final wide open. That was the window of opportunity the others were waiting for. After the first three tricks, Tejera was leading Whaley in second with Spiesberger following closely in third. The fourth trick's now, Spiesberger nails a seven-point slim chance. Liam Whaley strikes back with a fantastic 8.53 backside 315, the highest score of the heat. Carlos Mario down but not out. It's a backside 317 for a score of 8.47, Mario finding his groove again. But yet another showstopper from Liam Whaley at 8.67317 places Whaley in the lead after Set Tejera crashes. Carlos Mario goes out for his fifth trick. It's a heart attack seven. What an amazing trick. And he receives a perfect 10 for that one. That's a first ever perfect 10 score in the WKL. Spiesberger and Tejera failed to find an answer to the kind of form Mario and Whaley were producing on their last tricks, and it became a one-on-one -on -one duel between Mario and Whaley. Liam Whaley rose to the Mario challenge and produced 9.67 Slim 7 to keep the lead. But Mario also went for a Slim 7, and his 8.83 score means Mario takes the lead from Whaley by a mere 0.7 difference. What an amazing final this is turning out to be. It all comes down to the final tricks for these two masters. Whaley goes out and nails a huge 8.23 heart attack five. What a result under pressure as he takes back the lead by just 0.13.
Carlos Mario going for his final trick. This is it. This will decide the title. Whaley looks on, waiting nervously. Carlos Mario crashes. Whaley does it. Yeah, it's definitely the most intense heat I've ever had in my life, and it's probably one of the you know, the best victories for me I've ever had. Didn't have like the highest scores on my first tricks, the ones that I wanted to get, but um, as soon as Carlos Mario started missing his first couple of tricks, I was like, wow, this is my chance. Like, I have to go as big as possible. And then it all came down to the last trick. So intense and the, for the new format just makes it so amazing. The crowd on the beach, everything. Massive props to Carlos Mario as well. He just pushes everyone to the next level. He's a machine. And yeah, I'm just gonna try to better myself and come back stronger for the next event. Liam Whaley, winner of round one of the WKL World Cup. Mario would settle for runner-up with Set Tahera capping off an excellent event with a well-earned third place on the podium ahead of Stefan Spiesberger. That brings to a close the Mondial du Vent in Le Cat and round one of the WKL Elite League Tour. See you in round two.